What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Yamcast. Today is episode 22. That's a little hard to believe that it's been that many Yamcasts, but it is. Yep, here we are. Here we are. Today we got a fun bit of news from Royal Enfield, and what was the other bit of news? The Duke 200. The Duke 200. I do definitely want to talk about that. And if you are worried if we're not going to talk about Harley, don't worry. The Royal Enfield news is about Cruiser, so it's still kind of about Harleys in a way. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to be doing our call-in section as well, talking to our Discord boys, and then we got our contest of the week. Stick around. It's going to be a good one. Alrighty, Spite, what is first up on the docket for today's so, news? First up, we have some news from Royal Enfield that they are now making a 650cc cruiser. Now, this is all speculation at this point because somebody was able to see one in testing. So it's kind of like when they leaked mm. the 765 and the yeah, Harley yeah, Bronx. Yeah. Um, there's this really short clip, and I'm going to mute it. But it's some cell phone video of this dude right here on a Royal Enfield 650cc uh, test cruiser. mule thing. Yep. Which this looks like it's that 100% looks like India. Yeah. Based on the way people are driving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Indian dash cam footage, and traffic's crazy out there. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't survive. I don't think. And the it's 22 seconds, 16 seconds of of footage. Yeah. That's not a lot to go on, but it kind of makes sense, honestly. I think so. For, for Royal Enfield's, um, for their market, they, what, they, what they've what they done and what they've created, not about sport bikes, not about performance. Nope. It's about the classic looks, the classic vibe, the classic feel. Right? And what, what better to do than a cruiser? I agree. And you look at something like the Vulcans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Bolts, all these kind of more utilitarian engines being put into cruiser frames and chassis. Royal Enfield is the perfect spot to do it. And the Street series from Harley Davidson, the Street 750, You had to sneak in Harley and Rod, her, didn't you? They actually do really well in India. Do they? Yeah. People okay. People love them there. Cool. Uh, so it makes sense that this is a market for them to break into. Uh, it's going to be dog shit slow. Yeah. It's going to be ridiculously slow. Because it's going to be heavier than the Interceptor, and mm -hmm. it's going to be the same engine from the Interceptor. It makes, mm -hmm. I don't know, 42 horsepower or something yeah, like the, that? Yeah, the right? Interceptor, let's see. Let's pull up the specs on it. Yeah. I believe so. it's like 43 or 44 horsepower for the 650 Interceptor. Which don't at me that it's the best-selling bike in Britain and the UK and all that, and that's what makes it amazing. McDonald's sells a lot of hamburgers. It doesn't mean shit. I'm sorry. It was a little spicy, but... <laughs> it says 47.65 PS. I don't even know what that is. What is that? 47 what? PS. Uh, that's just, like, power. I guess. I, I've seen that PS unit yeah, before. Yeah, I think it's about 42 horsepower. Yeah. Um, and they make 52 newton meters of torque, which is about... 30 20 something like that it's gotta be more than 20 out of a 650 right dude it's only making 50 horsepower yeah i know yeah but th this is interesting because we were mentioning how yamaha should do this right where they mm -hmm. should take their parallel twin an actually good parallel twin from the yes. from the mt07 and put it in a little cruiser platform and see what it does you mm -hmm. know but i think they for a lot of these guys who aren't harley davidson they have a hard time breaking into that cruiser market yes it's tough man it's really tough because you have to contend with harley davidson yeah like it, all of the harley boys will they just won't buy your cruiser yeah period end of story yeah and they're gonna try and sell it here but it's not meant for american riders no i think we can say for sure right now it's just not meant for american riders Perhaps it's meant for an entry-level rider who does not have a familiarity with the Harley-Davidson Cruiser thing and then happens to come across the uh, Royal Enfield line of bikes. And one thing that Royal Enfield does really, really well, and we both have to admit it, is they're priced very aggressively. Yes, they really priced are. Priced super aggressively. So the Cruiser will be no different, I think. It'll be just as aggressively priced as something like the Interceptor, just as aggressively priced as their other bikes in their lineup because mm -hmm. they rely on a lot of that old technology that allows them to sell at a cheaper price. 
And one thing they do really, really well is they make a bike that if you're into the style, if you're into the look of it, is handsome, right? Like yes. the Interceptor 650, the Himalayan, if you like that look, it's it's a unique little look that they have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They yeah. they really capitalize on that classic old school aesthetic. Yeah. That's that's their their bread and butter right now. I imagine their leadership like 40 years ago is just like, you know what? If we don't update, eventually it'll be vintage and we can just resell the same thing again and make money. <laughs> so just ride out the storm and we'll get there. But I mean, it, it makes sense. I think it was only a matter of time. Yeah. You know, for they, they make the Himalayan, which is a kind of bad adventure bike. Yeah. They make the Interceptor, which is kind of a bad Neo Retro bike. Yeah, a bad standard bike. Just get a Bonnie, you know? Yeah. So why not make a cruiser where performance... Just make a bad cruiser. <laughs> well, performance doesn't matter. So yeah. So you can get away with a lot less. Well, shit, if you think about it, this could be an 883 competitor. Absolutely. Right? This could be a Vulcan competitor. Absolutely. Which the Vulcan fanboys, they're they're loud and proud, aren't oh, they? Oh, my God. The Vulcan boys. The you Vulcan guys boys love their... <laughs> Every every time I mention the Vulcan, oh it's, boy, we just get it wrong every time. We can't talk about the Vulcan. Just Kawasaki boys in general. Can we take a moment for Kawasaki boys? No matter what, you just always get it wrong. I've yep. said so many times that I like the Ninja Four Hundred, and people are like, "You just hate Kawasaki." I'm like, I I honestly have said how many times have I told you that I was like, once the Daytona blows up, I'm getting a six three six because yep. I love that bike. So I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Who hurt you? <laughs> Is, was it Honda? Did Honda hurt you? Because I could see that. <laughs> Kawasaki boys, man. <laughs> They're just jealous they don't compete in GP. Yeah. They used to for like a year, and then Kawasaki's like, we don't have fucking money for this shit. Let's go to WSBK. <laughs> <laughs> now, in speaking about bikes that don't make sense, I think we have another bit of news of another bike that doesn't make sense. And yes. this is one I actually have a lot to say about. is the, the Duke, Duke 200. 200. What? Yeah. Why it, is that here? <laughs> Why did they put that in America? <laughs> Do they have like a surplus of bikes? They were like, oh, fuck it, just ships them to North America. I mean, I I legitimately do not understand what this bike is doing in America. Yeah. I really don't. This is, uh, let's see. So if- this is a great line from Revzilla over here. Uh, the first line is, I don't think KTM designed the 200 Duke with the U.S. market in mind. We don't seem to have much appetite for 200s. And that's very true. Even oh, way back in the 80s, the babyest bike was a Ninja 250. Mm-hmm. We have never sold 200s for the street here. The only 200 I can think of is the TW200, which is a farm bike. You yeah. know, it's a tractor bike. It's nothing like this. No, this is, it looks like a, baby duke I mean, yeah it's really weird though because you know the 390 was the baby duke compared mm-hmm. to the super duke now you have an even smaller duke wait 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 i'm about to no no i'm about to pat everyone on the head in the international market the duke 125 oh we God. see you you are heard you are loved you are seen a1 bros i got you, you need i bu- see you you need to buy another motorcycle <laughs> Just wait two years or whatever it is on your A1 license and then get a real bike. (laughs) (laughs) Move up to that Duke 200. Oh, baby. Power in spades. So yeah, let's let's try to break this down of why the Duke 200 is here in America, dude. What what is this? Okay, so the Duke 200 is $4,000. Three nine nine. Competitively priced. Very competitively priced. However, for $500 more, you get an MT-03. Yeah, which, which has, is a whole lot more bike than yeah, this. Yeah, 121 extra cubes. Yeah. This thing just, I mean, it has a lot of the things that make the 390 cool, like the WP suspension and the TFT dash and the back. No, 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 no. This one doesn't have the TFT. It doesn't? This has the dash from the RC390, the LCD dash from it. Really? Yeah, it does. Uh, I recently watched Chase on Two Wheels' first ride of this bike where he was kind of funny. He, he jumped on. He was like, guys, about three days ago, I didn't even know that they had this bike here. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But, yeah, I know this, this thing features a lot of the tech from, like, the 2015 Dukes, hmm. which makes it even more weird, in my opinion. Yeah. So if you look at this thing, if you can find some photos of it on, the, on some other uh, website or yeah, something, you'll see, see that the dash is from the original, like, 2015 Duke and the RC390. Um and the only reason I know that is because I have an RC390. Let's see. Images. These are not there. Eh, it's the RC390. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing that. Th- there's our Duke 200. But these are all just, uh, these are all just, fo- you know, stock photos of it. 
But I, I really don't understand why they decided to make this motorcycle because it doesn't compete at all and it doesn't fulfill something. It's you know, there's no question for the American market. I don't know what it's supposed to do. But even for the Asian market, this is the kind of thing where maybe like, there's some weird like because uh, I know that they have certain like uh, taxes they have to pay on certain displacements and all that kind of stuff perhaps this falls in some category i don't know but we're i mean we're looking at this from a north american perspective because they started selling it here in north america yep what the fuck right what is this supposed to do for anybody like you said you spend 500 more dollars and you get an mto3 and here they say that it's pushing out 25 horsepower isn't that isn't that speed. isn't that still more than the GSX 250R? So here we have uh, some horsepower numbers. The Grom makes nine, the CB300R makes thirty, the Ninja 250 makes twenty-seven, and the TU250X makes sixteen. The uh, the GSX makes like twenty-seven horsepower. Yeah, which has an extra That's fifty cubes. It's abysmal. It's miserable. <laughs> Suzuki, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> I'm here, I'm out here trying to simp for you guys, and you do some shit like that. Come on. Um, but we see Lewis is saying we, the goal is to look fast no matter the cost. But the thing is, if you want to look fast no matter the cost, you might as well just spend a little bit of extra money and get that Duke 390. The Duke 390 is the way to go. Because it's the Duke 390 has such a great engine in it. Yes. And it's, it's so pokey and so fun. It's mated very well to the beginner bike style. Yes. You know? Um, and since we don't have A1 restrictions here in America, what's the point of a 200? Well, what's the point? Also, I mean, honestly, the elephant in the room is the Honda CB300. Yeah. I think that you could pick up one of those lightly used. It's basically the same as a Duke 200, but with 100 more cubes. It's a single cylinder, nice and pokey, fun engine, basically indestructible. If you get some of the older ones, you can pick that up for like two grand. So the CB300R, brand spanking new, $4,600. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous, you Mm -hmm. know? So I don't know if KTM's idea is that consumers are so price sensitive that they're not willing to spend just a couple hundred more bucks to get way more motorcycle, but Mm -hmm. I don't know the idea here. But again, even as an American rider, I can't see the point for the 200 even in the Asian market, because there's better motorcycles yeah. that fit within. Because the GSX 250 making about the same horsepower is going to fall in the same sort of licensing restrictions as yeah. 250. And then at that point, you know, the 300s are still A2 compliant. So I, I really don't understand it at all. Mm-hmm. And it it seems like a great way to just light four thousand dollars on fire. Yeah, this is a bike, and I, I don't like using this terminology, but I do think it's a bike that you're going to grow out of very quickly, whereas something like the Duke 390, you can keep for a long time. Something like the Spark Pill and 401, you can keep for a year, have fun with it, very flexible, you know, intuitive bike to ride, very easy going for a long period of time. A Duke 200, you, I mean, you're going to run out of steam on that thing in six months. Yeah, this this is a motorcycle right here that cannot do highway speeds. No, it can't. No, no, it can't. Yeah, this no. this thing is not fast enough. It, to... it will struggle probably to hit 75, 80, I think. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you, you're really just buying a bike. You're, you're buying a Duke-colored scooter. Yeah. That's all this is. Yeah, this is a bit of an overgrown scooter. Um, but, hey, I wouldn't mind taking one out for a ride and seeing maybe if it changes hearts and minds, but I cannot imagine that it would. It does look just like the 390, though. It does. So how many Dukes is that now? Let's think. We've got a Duke 125. We got a Duke 200. We got a Duke 390. We got a Duke 790. We have a Duke 890. We have a Duke 1290, mm-hmm. right? This the uh, the Super Duke. We have the Adventure version of the 1290. Mm-hmm. So that's seven Dukes. Well, then you got to count the ADV Duke 390. Yeah, there's the ADV 390. Yeah, yeah. it's just different. And you got to count the GT. The 1290 GT. That's right, the Sport Touring one. So that's nine. There's nine Dukes. That's some Ducati shit. <laughs> that really Honestly, is. Honestly, that well, is some Ducati shit. Unlike what Ducati did where they took the same motor and just like put it in a bunch of different colored yeah. bikes, they actually made a lot of different motorcycles. Yeah. Like there is a big difference between the seven the 790 
and the 890. Yeah. Also, Jesus Christ, but colored bikes, it's 2020, dude. Come on. <laughs> I, literally, the difference between the full throttle and the Cafe Racer is one is blue and one is yellow. Yeah. That's it. Changed my mind. Yep. It's kind of true. Yeah, I, I, I hate seeing the... It's like, oh, the V4S Tree Colore with the special edition <laughs> wheels and this and that. I'm like, okay, you blew 36 grand on a motorcycle. Congratulations. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> so yeah, Duke 200, really strange bike. Um, but yeah, let's move over to the call-in section of our podcast. All right, guys, we're now moving on to the call-in portion of our podcast. If you want the opportunity to call us up and chat with us, ask us anything you want within reason, feel free to join us up at yamminoob.co. You become a member, join our Discord. We're doing this live right now here, too, with everyone else. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's do it. T-minus three minutes until Moto Fan. Yep. <laughs> he, he does come with some interesting questions, though. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He puts a lot of thought behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't he the one that asked, no, someone else asked if they were like, what engine, what would be your favorite like combination of like frame and engine? If you could pick like one engine from any bike and then frame. That was moto fan. Might've been. Yeah. Hey there, Luke, you're on the yam cast. How's it going? Good guys. I'm a recent yammy noob. And, um, I recently upgraded my bike from a Honda CB 750 to a Yamaha XSR 900 because I couldn't nice. find a 700 for sale. And the 900's been great, and now my wife is interested in riding with me. What should I be looking for for her? Interesting. Um, let's think. Does your wife have any previous riding experience whatsoever is my first question. If you count a bicycle, other than that, no. Hmm. How tall is she? 5'6". Uh, okay. That's pretty amenable. Yeah, I... Some riders like in the five one to five two range can be kind of tough, but five six five six is a good height. Um, what kind of bikes does she like? Does she like sport bikes, cruisers? What, what, what kind of stuff is she into? Uh, probably more standard or naked. Okay. She really liked the MT three. I showed her your guys' video of kind of tuning the MT three. That was seemed interesting to her, but I just wasn't sure if the O three would last long enough. Honestly, yeah, I mean the MT three is a really good choice in my opinion because it's super cheap. Um, it's actually pretty fun to ride if you just do a quick little sprocket swap on it. it gets to be really pokey and revvy. Um, got a biker outside of our office right now, <laughs> revving away. Hopefully that doesn't come through on the camera. Um, yeah, I would say MTO3. Spite, what do you think? Uh, I mean, if you want something that's got a little bit more punch to it, something that might last a little bit longer, uh, Ninja 400. Oh, that's a good one um, too, yeah. That that seat height's not too high. Uh, the Duke Like the Z400? The Z400 could be cool, too. The, yeah, the Z or the Ninja. Honestly, they, they seat about okay. the same. Uh, but if she likes the standard style, the Z400 is obviously the better choice. Uh, the Duke I was going to say, I just watched your, your YouTube video, 300 sucks. So how can I? <laughs> That's well, it's because, a 400. Yeah, the, th- the, the Ninja 400 is actually a good motorcycle because it has enough power for you to really have fun with. Whereas some of the 300s are just kind of anemic, honestly. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks, guys. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for calling in. Oh, didn't even say bye. <laughs> didn't even say bye. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a piece of meat to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brendan, you are on the Yamcast. How's it going? Hey, you guys. I am doing pretty good. How are you today? Good. I'm loving the energy. What can we do for you? Um, I just wanted to uh, come on and share something that I'm really grateful for today. Sweet. All right. So, uh, um... I just recently bought my first motorcycle. My uh, my brother helped me out a ton with it, and he's actually got it sitting at his uh, his house right now. And yesterday he was at work, and he gave me a call. He sounded all frazzled. I thought maybe he yeeted it into the great beyond or something. <laughs> and uh, he told me that uh, there was a wildfire ripping through his city, and there was a good chance that his house was going to be burned down. Oh, no. Nice. And... Uh, first thing he does of course because you know he's awesome is he calls me all worried about my motorcycle and his entire life is about to go up in flames oh wow and so uh yeah uh lord rossi came through and he split those flames with his great staff of busa <laughs> and, uh, you know thousands of homes in this southern oregon fire were burnt to the ground and you know a hundred feet away from my brother's house people lost everything and 
you know, we're just so thankful today that uh, my, my brother's home is still standing. Both our moto babies are sitting in the garage unharmed. And, man, when he called me and told me he was standing inside his house this morning, I, I broke down crying. Oh, man, that must have been terrible. I, I'm so happy to hear that nothing happened and uh, that, you know, somehow it, it got unscathed. Um, you know, it's, it's important that, you know, all your loved ones are safe and sound, but it is a, it's a big bummer to lose all your personal possessions and a home that you've spent time and built and, you know, uh, turned into a home, really. Uh, so that's great to hear. What bike was it that was safe? Yeah. What, what do you have? Uh, I got a BMW F800 ST. It's a 2008. Sweet. Pretty pretty cool little boomer mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Southern Oregon has some really, really pretty riding. Is it more towards the coast that this house is at? Uh, this is like right off I-5. Oh, okay. Right there in uh, central Southern Oregon in Jefferson County. Or, yeah, Jefferson County. Sweet. Well, thanks for sharing the story, man. Glad to hear your bike's safe and sound, and, and hopefully you get to ride it soon. Yeah, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, longtime fan, recent subscriber. Keep on doing your thing, guys. Thanks All right, again. man. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. That's something we don't really have to contend with here in Austin is these wildfires. You've heard in California, it's like blowing up right Basically now, right? Basically like yearly. Yeah. And, and I'm honestly, it's only a matter of time before we have to, because you, look, you go down it to, be dry as fuck here, yeah. you go down to like that um, state park that was lit on fire by a disgruntled cattle worker. Yeah. Yeah, that sucked. Mm-hmm. Lucky Lou. Hey. There we go. Lucky Lou, winner of our R3 last year. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. It's been a while. How you been? Good. It's good to hear from you. Uh, yeah. I've been quiet a little lately. I've been busy. But, yeah. Uh, what you all been up to? Oh, man, just keep busy over here. We got the new office uh, moved in uh, March of this year. We got a ton of new giveaway bikes. Uh, hire on two people already, two new guys already so far, Josh and Andrew. Uh, the website's getting a redesign, all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. I finally figured out how to re-enter there for your expert giveaway bike. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear it. You don't want to miss out on this one right now, uh, which by the time this Yamcast comes out, tomorrow you guys will know what the new giveaway bike is, but yeah. Right on. I got to climb up that tree, but hey, here's a good question for you, something that you might be able to think about marketing. You ever thought about uh, coming up with like a fragrance line for you? Like <laughs> a fragrance <Eau> line? <laughs> Gucci Spoochy. Yeah, Gucci Spoochy. Oh, yeah. Eau de Gucci. Gucci Spoochy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that could be like that uh, that one uh, uh, e-girl, Belle Delphine, and just sell my bath water to people, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, sell your used bike oil. That might get you further. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I got to know my market there. <laughs> Less diseases with that, too. That is true, and probably not a, a bioterrorism hazard as well. Probably don't have a felony being committed by shipping oil around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what yeah. she got. I think she got in trouble for that. Actually, she was like shipping around her bath water, and then like that was like a basically like a felony to ship around that stuff because it was like bio stuff. Yeah, so I think it's a biohazard. Yeah, which what a crazy fucking world we live in, dude. Yeah, <laughs> people buying some people will do anything oh my God. for money, and people will give money away for anything. That is yeah. true. Uh, so I remember last time we spoke, you had upgraded the giveaway R3 that I gave to you to an R6. Uh, but you've since sold that R6, is that right? Yeah, that's true. I had that 2006 50th anniversary ah, R6. Beautiful bike. It was. I scoured the marketplace for ages, finally found one in Iowa, drove all the way up there with a buddy, and then made the mistake of trying to iron butt challenge all the way back. Oh, mm, man. man. On an R6. Oh, dude. Oh, man. I made it, but I, I wanted <laughs> but to at what one. cost? I got <laughs> <laughs> but the unfortunate thing is is that as soon as uh, i decided that i was going to have to sell it you know i didn't feel as safe riding by myself i prefer group rides mm -hmm. You're supposed to have more fun and at least you got people watching your back but no one wanted to so i decided well i didn't do much to it other than put miles on it so i shouldn't be charging more than what it's what i think it's worth mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as i sold it the guy put it right back up on the market for about, I don't know, $1,600 more than what I'd sold it oh, for. Oh, man. That it's sucks. those gougers, man. Yeah. So right now you're, you're bikeless? I'm bikeless right now, but 
I'll see what I can do in the future. I've got my eye on some older, older bikes that run. There's a 1990s Yamaha FZR that is mint. Mm. I'm just, I'm surprised that they've kept it so nice. And then there's another one, uh, the Honda, I think it's a CRX Turbo. Oh, yeah, I've definitely heard of those. That would be absolutely wonky if you bought one of those. They're really rare, actually. I know. There's one in town. They've got it, I think, for around five grand. But can you imagine a bike with a turbo on it? Oh, I won't have to imagine for very long. I'm going to slap a turbo on my Busa. (laughs) (laughs) God, man. Yeah. Well, Luke, I, or sorry, uh, Luke, I wish you uh, the best endeavors in your bikeless future. Uh, hopefully, you get that FCR. If you do get the turbo bike, dude, you got to post it up on the Discord because I'd love to see that thing running and doing its thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll talk with you guys later. Enjoy the show. I'll keep on watching. All right, man. Thanks for calling. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye. Right. He's got such a like salt of the earth accent to him. Mm-hmm. You know, so nice. That's 60th anniversary, though. Man, it's a great colorway. The R1 with the bronze wheel was really nice, too. Unknown. Mm. Interesting. German A2, boy, it must be late over there in Germany. Thank you for calling. Yeah, yeah it's 140. Jeez, oh, man. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Die hard. I don't, need to work. I don't need to work tomorrow. Oh, um, good. So uh, I have just a small question again. Um, what do you think about the uh, 400cc four cylinder bikes from the 90s, like uh, GSX-R400, ZX-R400 and stuff? Um, man, those are really cool, honestly. And I think that they, I think they have a bit of a cult following because we didn't get a lot of them here in America. And now people are starting to import them more and start to get really interested about them too. There's an account I follow on Instagram called Iconic Motorbike Auctions, uh, and they specialize in these like old and weird Japanese bikes, and they always have the old four-sill little bikes from Japan. And it's just kind of crazy hearing something rev out to like 19 grand, you know? They're so interesting. Uh, Spy, what do you think about them? Well, I had a little bit of a forced epiphany uh, about those when I watched the most recent Fortnite video, and he he talked again about how torque and horsepower are related mm. to RPM. Uh, and he was like, the reason why they made so much horsepower is because they revved out to 19,000 RPM. Right. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, they're probably not very, they, they really don't make much power, do they? Yeah, you got to just squeeze them and squeeze them and squeeze them, yeah. However, Have a- oh, uh, Honda makes the Super 4, the, the VTEC Super 4. I very much want to ride that one because yeah. it's a naked inline four with VTEC. Yeah, very much want to ride that. Yeah, so I, I thought uh, about getting a ZXR four hundred as a track bike because those are like dirt cheap here, like two thousand euros, two thousand five hundred euros. Oh, nice. Um, in really good condition, and they make about sixty five horsepower, I think. So should be pretty manageable, not too much torque. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've the only small displacement four cell I've ever ridden uh, was the RVF four hundred in Australia in twenty sixteen, the baby V four, and that was so cool. Yeah. I loved that bike. Um, it was a lot of fun to ride, and it felt way more modern than a little nineties bike should. And it had the right graphics on it. it. Had the you ever seen these with like it has like the air snorkels yep. and the fairings. Yep, those are so cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So if you uh, so you, you're thinking of getting one. Yeah, I think so. I, I firstly need uh, to uh, pay for the uh, for the rep I'm doing on the 400, but mm-hmm. I think uh, next year it's 636 for the street or uh, like a ZXR for the track. Yeah. I don't. I need to decide what. So well, my my vote would be for the track bike, so you know that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't la- uh, don't have a lot of tracks here in in my region, so yeah, it's always like two or three hours drive. But you Not do have the nice, Autobahn, so that's pretty good. And the Nuremberg Ring. And the Nuremberg. If you're feeling like a complete yeah. wild man, <laughs> are you cl- are I'm you go- close I'm to the Nuremberg Ring or no? Yeah, I'm going to the Nuremberg Ring when the when the bike is ready. But that will be like a six hour ride. Oh, <laughs> damn! Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. 
Uh, is it I'm true that it's just like uh, the Nurburgring? Is it true that it's just like uh, you you just kind of show up and ride it like a normal road almost? Because I know it's like yeah, yeah, it's, technically a track, but it's much more relaxed, right? Um, the 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 situation is like it is um, officially an autobahn, so you can just go as fast as you want. It's an open autobahn. You have to um, hold yourself on the right all the time. You have uh, your vehicle needs to be street legal, and that. Just that everyone can go there, like 30 euros a lap. That's all. It the has to road. be street legal. That's interesting. That is. Do you know how fucking nuts that is? They just have this like, uh, like a how? I mean, the Nurburgring is huge. Yeah. Right. It's like 19 miles or something. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's enormous, and it's just like an autobahn. There's like, just go, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. the, the people over there are just a little <laughs> bit smarter than we are. Probably. I, I think so. Yeah. If we did uh, that they're, here, they're, there'd be there'd be deaths instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of people that are very unresponsible and crashing a lot. Yeah, I bet. Mostly Brits, but yeah, a lot of people crashing there. Old knife twist to the Brits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those Brits come and visit and they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Now. So, nice talking to you guys. Yeah, I, I just much. wanted to let you know as well, you are right now our number one meme maker on Discord. I want everyone to know that you have set the bar for the memes on Discord, and I very much appreciate it. I feel very honored. Thank you. All right, go get some rest, man. It's late over there. Yep. All right, later. Bye, guys. Bye. That guy's been a real treat. Yeah, he has. He's been a real treat on that. He, he's a recent member, right? He joined up not too long ago. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a new ad. Yeah. I love hearing from international audience. I think they, they provide a good perspective on it. We have a lot of very active international boys mm-hmm. on the on the server. A lot of British folks. A lot a of British of folks. Germans, too. Yeah. It's funny if you log into the Discord at like odd hours, you see them out and about and doing stuff, you yep. know? Odd hours here. And yeah. It's like they're just daytime. There's, yeah, it's there in the morning over there. 1.40 a.m. What a diehard, dude. Calling in that late. He's a trooper. Yeah. Um, Mr. Negative said parts for the CXR are unobtainium. I bet that's for that turbo Honda. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, there's no way you're gonna find those easy. It's like that one ridiculous like shaft drive Honda mm. that like had to turn right. The 900, and, yeah, yeah, with the yeah. God, what a stupid motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that's when Honda just were like, well, let's just do eh, it. Screw it, yeah. Because they made so many different kinds of motorcycles that they were like, we could just. Do whatever we want with this motorcycle. Yeah. And now they just make kind of meh bikes. Yeah. Even the new CBR Triple R SP, I don't know. Like, it's super fast and cool and all that, but it it doesn't have the old, like, crazy Honda feel to me, you know? No, it really doesn't. And the only bike that does, honestly, that Honda makes is the Fury. Is the Fury, yeah. (laughs) They make a fucking chopper. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which is bananas to me. Yeah, for Honda to make that. It's so weird. Um, yeah, I, I think it'd be nice to see them making some better stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I take that back. They make great motorcycles. Absolutely. They, they work super well, but I don't know. They're a little boring. They're a little, yeah, they're just generic. They, yeah. It's like you bought a Civic. Great. Yeah. Literally, the throttle position sensor on the 919 is from a Civic. <laughs> That's great. Yep. Ask I'm still holding out for the day. They'll make a V4 naked bike from the VFR. It'll oh never fucking happen. If they, if they with could the do single-sided that. swing arm, quick shifter up and down, TFT, they could do it. No, oh, absolutely. They could do it in a heartbeat. They won't. And they could probably make it not cost a bazillion dollars. Yeah, they would just make a Prilia just wet themselves with fear. Oh, you know? absolutely. Because they've it's cornered a- the V4 naked bike thing. There's like, here you go. It's a V4 naked bike that isn't going to be just stupidly you know finicky yeah it'll be usable it'll mm-hmm. be fun i think that might wrap up our call in section not seeing anybody else call in here so we might move on over to the contest portion of our podcast let's do it Alrighty, guys this is now the contest portion of our podcast if you're listening to the audio only version you can check out the rest of this on youtube where you can see and hear the contest so we're now going to move over to that so this week for our contest We We did something a little different, right? Yeah, we had something a little bit different. We wanted to hear our Discord boys tell us a funny story that happened to them out riding because everybody's got those, like, water cooler moments out there. So we wanted some folks to share that with us. Yeah. Our story is the big hill in Big Bend. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. It like gets bigger and bigger every week. Mm-hmm. It's just that that hill was like Mount Everest, man. It's like Mount Everest. It was like a quarter pipe at the top. You and I both caught like 20 feet of air at least easy mm-hmm. off that lip. That was crazy, man. Yeah, it was absolutely cleaned it too. It yeah, just even... wasn't even scared at all going up it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and so we have seven entries this week. And just so we can get this out of the way now, we are uh, grading it on funniness as we always do and mm-hmm. presentation not now presentation is not necessarily the quality of the video mm. because you know not everybody makes yeah. videos for a living but more about how they tell the story because you know we don't want to hear about how somebody the one time they the a kid wanted them to do a wheelie and then they did a wheelie somebody cut me off on i-35 yeah so cool. <laughs> we want we want a little bit of energy yeah. out of them and so we got our seven entries. Let's dive right in with our first one from German A2 Boy. So I was invited to this party. There was a lengthy ukulele player, and I wanted to get back to her there. With the ukulele in my backpack, the neck sticking out because of course it didn't fit in, I set off. After about a mile or two of the autobahn, I realized, damn, this thing could fly out of here if I don't stop. That's amazing. That is great. So for the folks at home who maybe couldn't have heard that, uh, German A2 was telling us a story about how he had a ukulele in his backpack, realized he had to take it out, and then apparently was wearing full leathers on the Autobahn <laughs> riding his 400 and just had a ukulele in front of him as well. That's pretty good. I like the the animation to it as well. That's yep. pretty awesome. He's, he's always, he always brings the heat, doesn't he? He really does. God damn it, he puts a lot of effort into it. Funniness. That's pretty good. I think a nine. That's yep. pretty funny. Presentation. So we we said we weren't gonna ba- uh, we weren't gonna grade it based on the uh, quality of it, right? Because yeah. not everyone knows how to make videos yeah. and all that. Um, it was it was presented pretty well. It was a pretty well told story, I'd say. Um, I think a seven. Seven. Yeah. Sixteen out of a possible twenty. Still pretty dang good yeah. from German A2 Boy. And also a point that I'd like to give for A2 Boy is uh, that English probably is not his first language as well, so yeah. hats off to doing one in English and not in German. So, good job. All right. Next Hello. one is from Motorbike Mike. So this is my funny motorcycling story. Not as funny as it is just fun to laugh at. So I was driving down the highway, uh, just on a cruise. I just had taken a right-hand sweeper on an interchange, so a lot of fun, leaning over, giving some gas. Boulevard C50, so it's not really going that fast, but it sure sounds like it. But anyways, so I take the turn. The roads are shit, so the bike just bumping around. As I'm riding, the phone gets loose and just slides up, falls onto the road. Ooh. So of course, I'm freaking out. I'm like, shit, how am I gonna recover my phone? I eventually turn around, go to recover it, and found it. As you can see, it's pretty just trashed. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> just nuked it on the ground. Um, I swear, every time, even with the rock form mounts, I still am so nervous about the phone just sliding right off like that because mm-hmm. I've heard of stories of happening. Um, that's why we like the quad lock or the, the, the little situation they have to lock it into place with the magnet and hold it in place. It's pretty good. Um, have you ever had a phone fall out of it? On nope, you? I have not. I, I haven't I, either. Whenever I have my phone on there, I'm always like, I have the. I used to use RAM mounts, mm-hmm. uh, and you just pinch the shit out of them and use the little rubber loops. Yeah, it's pretty rock solid, but they're you know really cumbersome. And I've actually had two uh, uh, claw mounts stolen off of my motorcycles. They just wow. walk by, unscrew, unscrew it, and just take, take it. it. Yeah, too easy. Um, that's why I like the the bolt on that the rock form has because you can't take it off without just unscrewing it. You know. Yep. Um, I have had a GoPro fall off before. That was what scared the shit out of me when I started moto vlogging. Yeah. I used to have that little like rope. That, yeah, yeah. And I don't do that anymore because now it's like, well, if it's lasted this long. My, I've had two GoPros fall off. Um, 
And one, I had it where it fell right off my chin, which mm-hmm. sucked, and it, it fell on the ground, and it completely got nuked. And then the other one, it was on the tail section of my bike, and I hit a big bump, and it fell off, and I didn't see it fall off. So I got home, and it was just gone. No. And I was like, oh, okay, I just don't have a GoPro anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just gone. Yep. All right, motorbike Mike, funniness. Uh, that was pretty funny. I'd give it like a six. Six? Yeah. Presentation. He told it pretty well, I'd say. Another six. I also like the chuck in the phone down. Yeah, the, the chuck in the phone is good. I'll give it a seven for presentation. I thought the chuck was pretty funny. Thirteen. Next one comes to us from Seven Round Burst. I think he's also a newer member. Okay, so I'm at the gas station. I'm filling up my bike. I hear this honking going on down the street, right? So into the parking lot of the gas station comes this truck and these two bikes. They pull up next to the curb, and the guy in the truck gets out, and the guy on the first bike gets off his bike, and they go up to each other, and they're road raging, right? So they're screaming at each other. Hey, why don't you watch where the hell you're going? All this kind of crap. They start cussing at each other for a minute. Finally, the guy on the bike says, you know, I want you to get the hell out of here, man. And so the guy that was driving the truck says, yeah, well, your mom's a hoe. So I start cracking up. But the guy on the first bike turns around and look at the other rider, who I found out later after talking to him, was actually the guy's mom. And she pulled off her helmet and said, shit, you couldn't afford this. And so the guy in the truck just walked up to his truck, drove away. It's freaking epic. <laughs> I've That's always, great. I've always thought that was such a strange retort to someone. Just be like, yeah, well, your mother uh, prostitutes herself on the street. It's like, yep. what, a, what a strange thing to tell someone. <laughs> uh, also, really crazy that their mom was there with them. That was pretty yep. funny. Uh, what do you think for funniness? I think that, that one was good. Yeah, I think an eight. Yeah. That was pretty good. Presentation. Solidly told. I think an eight as yeah. well. Solidly, solidly told. That felt that, you know, it was like nice a good and water tight. cooler yeah. moment kind of thing. Yeah. Next one comes to us from Lou, and I hope this is the story I think it is. I'll try and keep this short, but this was the story of my first Hoonigan experience while riding the R3. (laughs) So earlier in the day, we were out riding, and I had been made fun of by my Harley-riding neighbor about how I'm riding a sport bike, and I hadn't been going fast enough (laughs) and all that. So anyway, later on in the day... Uh, we got separated in our group leaving the plaza from our small town and there was about five stoplights ahead of us and what had happened was I couldn't hear I didn't have one of those headsets like my friends did and I'm on the exhaust side of my buddy who got stuck with me and what I had heard when he had leaned over was when this old man crosses the street we gotta go (laughs) and uh, well that wasn't what actually had been said So, as soon as that old man's crutch touched the side of the walk, I fucking hauled it, (laughs) launched that little R3, and off I went through about three or four (laughs) stoplights. I probably stopped around the third one, tried to slow down at least, then I thought, oh shit, my buddy might be behind me. So, uh, I just gunned it again, there was these chicks on the sidewalk just screaming and pointing as I went by, just like, oh my god! Anyway... We finally caught up. They was waiting for us, it turned out, and my buddy just came rolling up laughing his ass off. But that's about what I got. Hmm. Oh, that wasn't about the, the, Damn the it. looping. Yeah. So, for the folks at home, uh, that was Lucky Lou, one of the guys who won our bikes. He actually won the 2019 R3 we did last year and promptly put up a photo about, like, two or three weeks later of the bike. The bike's rear end just kind of in, in shattered and up. fucked up. And we were like, you looped the bike, didn't you? And he was like, no. And I was like, you looped that bike. You did a wheelie and you fucked up. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, I did. So we were hoping that was going to be his wheelie story because we still don't know what happened exactly. But unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, that story was interesting. I thought it was pretty funny. But at the same time, so did you catch like what it was that he wasn't supposed to do or what happened? I, they, I think they were trying to like get the group back together. Yeah. And there was miscommunication. It like, r- brings up images of that meme of like motorcyclist telephone through the yeah, helmets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and he was just, he ended up running a bunch of red lights trying to get back <laughs> to his group. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm feeling a six for funniest. Agreed. Yeah. And then presentation. Honestly, just for filming the airbag alone, that was great. The whole thing was just his airbag. That's pretty funny. Uh, he has that, like we were saying, that real salt of the earth kind of quality to his, his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm feeling, 
I'm feeling a seven on that. A seven. All yeah. Right. Just 16 and two 13s. Cool. Next one comes to us from uh, Don Tito. So there I was, finally back on the open road. That's a real bike. I felt it. The wind in it's my hair. Starting. But then I looked over and I saw it. It was that mother loving Hayabusa! Yeah, there we go. All the way down. <laughs> Interesting. So not a real story, it seems, or perhaps he did see a Hayabusa out in the wild. And then he went down afterwards. One thing I love on our Discord server is whenever someone spots a Busa, they either take a photo of it or they have to tell them, it's like, I saw a Busa today. It's like a rite of passage yeah. almost. Um, it is really great when you do see an honest-to-God Busa rider in the wild. Did I tell you about the time I saw one? I don't think so. I was so. coming home from uh, a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I was going down uh, Lamar. I was going to get on airport. Yeah. And lo and behold, next to me, there is a man on a white Gen 2 Hayabusa Beautiful. stock exhaust. Stock with, exhaust? Yeah, stock bike with a white helmet and the fin. And this dude was just all about the Busa. And it wasn't until I got behind him and my headlight hit the back of his jacket till I noticed that he had the um, that fluorescent stuff that is mm, on the jackets. Yeah. But when it the light hit it, it was the Hayabusa logo <laughs> on his jacket. <laughs> and I pulled up next God to the guy. It. <laughs> it was just, I was sitting next to the guy, and I was like, you are a true Hayabusa man. Yes, not, not a Busa boy. He's a Hayabusa, Hayabusa man. man. <laughs> and I, Elegant, composed, you yep, know? He was all about the Busa, and not in, like, a Busa way. Yeah, just like, a, I respect the Hayabusa. He says Hayabusa. He never yeah. says Busa. He says Hayabusa. Yeah. Which we have to include in the video we're doing next week for the yes. So You Want a Busa is the difference between Google searching a Hayabusa and, and a Busa. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So for Don Tito, uh, funniness, I think a five. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. But he did put in some effort for the presentation there. He did put in some effort, filmed himself and all that. But it wasn't a real story, it wouldn't seem, right? It was kind I of a... I can't really tell if it was a real story or kind of a... Well, even if it was a story, what was the plot, right? What was yeah. the you He know, saw the climax? Busa got distracted, and now his bike's in the ditch. Yeah. Uh, I'd say like a six. Six. Yeah. Next one comes to us from MD Ranger 91 all right what's up guys i wanted to tell a story about something pretty funny that happened to me while i was out riding uh, i was out here in my driveway getting ready to go for a ride wheel the bike up to the end of the driveway i hear this awful racket coming down the road and look to my left and what do i see but one of these three-wheeled car engine shit bikes coming down the way <laughs> painted like an american flag and all I could think to say was, What in cousin fucking tarnation, Alabama Betty Crocker, <laughs> Miss fucking Betty White shit is this? <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, having spent much of my life perusing Craigslist, that is exactly the sentiment that I have. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't get the three-wheeler thing at all, dude. I've, Fuck, they're so weird. I've only seen a couple. Okay, so... Have you seen one in person? Not the Harley Davids... The Tri-Glide. The Tri-Glide. Not yeah. counting that one, because I've seen a ton of those around here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have seen ridiculous trikes once in my life before, and that was in the Rot Rally Parade. I could see that, yeah. There were a bunch of those ridiculous 19-foot-long VW, VW trikes. Yeah. Yeah. With the swing arm that's like, or the uh, the fork that has a rake like that. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the little itty it's bitty It's damn near tire. parallel with the ground, you know? Yep. Yeah. And I saw, and it, they were going about 10 miles an hour because if they went any faster, the thing would fall apart. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, funniness for him, I think a, what do you, what do you think? I've been giving all the numbers here. I think it was a good one. I think it was pretty fun, you know. Yeah, it was, it was funny. I like the the mishmash of the thing at the end. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where that clip was from, but it's pretty good. This feels kind of seven. Yeah, I think a seven me. as well. I think the presentation, presentation was solid. I think an eight. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. All right, and our last one comes to us from Mr. Negative. Oh, I can't wait. Riding from New Jersey to Memphis, middle of November, 40 degrees, 42 degrees, drizzle, rain, too rainy to drink coffee, 
or raise the visor on them too much. Not not another damn motorcycle on the road. Ball shavers. And pulling a rest stop in Virginia. <laughs> got the visor up, smoking a cigarette. Old guy in a motorhome across the parking lot. Opens his door. Takes, takes a picture. Waves at me. Closes the door. Couldn't even offer me a damn cup of coffee. <laughs> Nervous, some people. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. I like that. Yeah. I, I love the ball, the ball shaver shavers. bit. The bit. Yep. Yeah. You got to have the ad read in the middle, man. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Negative, I will say you could have transitioned a little bit smoother there. Maybe I can coach you a little bit how to get that segue nice and tight when you're talking about your ball shavers. <laughs> Didn't you? What was your discount code, man? Come on. <laughs> Uh, funny as we like that was an eight. That was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Presentation. Um, that was, it was, I think it was well told. Yeah. yeah. I, I like how it's sort of like that kind of like, you know, grizzled storyteller kind of vibe, you yep. know? Yeah. And I like how it's the get. you know, he's the only motorcycle on the road. Yeah. Guy pops the, fi- the door on his motor home, yeah. takes a picture and didn't even <laughs> offer him a cup of coffee. <laughs> I say at nine. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. 17, number one Whoa. for Mr. Negative. He's the winner. Holy crap. I didn't think he was. That's, that's awesome. All right, sweet. <laughs> so Mr. Negative is first place for this week. Our who's second, second place? place? Again, German A2 boy. German A2 too, too boy. Too good. Uh, second place goes to seven round burst. Because German A2 boy is on his cooldown, right? He's still on his cooldown. You got to stop being so good, German A2 boy. You keep winning. <laughs> keep Keep getting these podiums. <laughs> And then our next guy, he's the Marquez of memes. Hey, yes, he is. Yeah, yes. he just keeps winning. Just keeps winning. And then our uh, <laughs> maybe to make our meme contest better, we have to remove him. <laughs> <laughs> Much like GP. Yeah. Yep. And our third place goes to MD Ranger ninety one. Sweet. Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, Spite's going to get with you on the Discord and get your prizes out to you. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Yamcast, and thanks so much for watching. Remember, if you want to join up and have fun with us, go to yamnoob.co and check it out. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. That was an interesting outro. Bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. Didn't we have one one time where we were like, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) bye-bye.